Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> I am Brianna Morrison and uh, I needed to do another video on books because I love books, I'm obsessed with books. And when I went to Ireland, which I've been vlogging about, if you haven't watched those, go watch those. I'll put a, I'll put a link up there. While I was in Ireland, I wanted to travel around and look at all the different little local independent bookstores. And I ended up buying a lot of books. I bought so many books and let's be real, other things. I got a couple sweaters and a blanket and, you know, stuff. But I got so many books that we had to buy another piece of luggage to make sure we could get it all home. So this little video is just gonna be going through the books that I purchased in Ireland, what drew me to them and why I purchased them. There's like, I don't know, seven? I think I got seven books, which isn't a lot, but it is for some people, I don't know, I don't tend to buy seven books within a week's period of time. <laughs> That's quite a bit for me. I'm very excited to share these books with you and maybe you'll get inspired to read some new Irish authors. Before I dive into the books, there's two things you should know. First, this is a freaking wild weather sort of day. Uh, we're in Portland at the end of March. This morning it was snowing. It's been really, really sunny. Um, but at the same time as it's being sunny right now, the sky's actually turning black. <laughs> so I have no idea what's happening with the lighting. I'm on auto exposure, so hopefully that'll like help mellow things out and keep it where it should be. Uh, the second thing you should know are the cats decided right when I sat down to film to be crazy. Um, so they're playing slash Ash is chasing Poppy and attacking her and Thistle gets really anxious when he does that. So she whines and barks and they're making all sorts of racket and I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but hopefully, we get through it. I hope we get through it. Now for the books. The first book I purchased was in Dublin. It was our first full day in Ireland and it was this beauty here. So I can't read this on the screen. Um, this Happy by Niamh Campbell. I'm probably pronouncing that way incorrectly. Um, this was the first book I purchased. I absolutely love this cover. I think this cover art is so beautiful. And honestly, I don't remember why I bought this. I think the story intrigued me. Obviously, I looked at a ton of books and I was like, I want a book that makes me want to read it. So um, I'll just read you the synopsis. When Alana was 23, she met an older man, a married man, and fell in love. The two spent three heady weeks in a cottage in the Irish countryside. Six years later, when Alana is newly married to another man, a chance encounter brings back memories of those days spent in bliss, then torture, and the realization that she has been waiting all this time to be rediscovered. Yeah. All of these books, by the way, are Irish authors. I can't remember if I said that before or not, but these were all written by Irish people. And so this was the first book I purchased. Sounds very dramatic and lovely and um, you know, a nice nonsensical read. <laughs> the second book I purchased um, is, honestly, I have, I, I take it back. I don't know if she's an Irish author. Uh, this is a book called Wild Places. It's selected stories by um, Catherine Mansfield. And she is an older author I have never read anything from her. Um, I don't typically like short stories books at all, but I opened this one up and it was just so beautiful. And it sounded exactly like something I would wanna read. Oh, and she died really young. She died at like 35 years old, which is insane. Um, it wasn't, you know, it was an illness that killed her. I'm gonna read you a little blurb from this book and what really drew me to it. This is called Tiredness of Rosabelle. That's the short story. At the corner of Oxford Circus, Rosabelle bought a bunch of violets, and that was practically the reason why she had so little tea. Let's try that again. At the corner of Oxford Circus, Rosabelle bought a bunch of violets, and that was practically the reason why she had so little tea for a scone and a boiled egg and a cup of cocoa at Lyons are not ample sufficiency after a hard day's work in a millinery establishment. 
As she swung onto the step of the Atlas bus, grabbed her skirt with one hand and clung to the railing with the other, Rosabelle thought she would have sacrificed her soul for a good dinner. Roast duck and green peas, chestnut stuffing, pudding with brandy sauce, something hot and strong and filling. Yeah, that got me. So I started reading that story and I should probably start from the beginning because I haven't picked this up since I was in Ireland because I have a lot of books I'm reading right now. So the next book I bought is one that I wasn't 100% sold on. I had this idea that I would find some long form fiction that was based on old Irish legends. And when I was in Ireland, I really couldn't find that. I find books like that quite often here in the States and I, and I really love them a lot. But as far as having those books in Ireland, that's not, they're never, they're nowhere. I looked in all the bookstores. I didn't find a single one. So what I did find or what Andrew found for me was this book here. And this book is a collection of Irish legends as told by people from the Irish countryside. And um, I'm really excited to read this because these are like true people's accounts of Irish legends that have been around for millennia, uh, which is really, really, really cool. And one of the most unique things about Ireland is they still have kind of this magical superstition folklore type thing going on out there, um, even after being totally conquered by the Christian world. So I, I love that they're still very in touch with all of these mythical stories. I did not tell you this author's name. The book is called Weave and the author's name, yeah, I, I know I cannot pronounce that name, so I'm not even gonna try. Uh, but I found this book in multiple bookstores across Ireland and it's very well received. It was even at an art bookstore. Um, and so it, yeah, it's something I'm excited about. The next book is called The Horse of Celine. And this is by Juanita Casey. And I picked this one up in Dingle, and I haven't gotten to that vlog yet, uh, but I, I will really soon, actually, probably next week. Uh, or yeah, the ne next, next week, something like that. <laughs> and um, I didn't realize it when I purchased this book, but this book is actually older. It was written in the 70s. And Juanita Casey is a very interesting person. I'm just gonna read you just her like tiny little bio in the back of the book. Um, and then I'm gonna read an excerpt of, the, excerpt of the book because it just, yeah, mm, so good. Okay, Juanita Casey, she lived from 1925 to 2012. Uh, she's a best-selling novelist, celebrated poet, horse trainer and artist, and she was born to an Irish traveler mother and an English Romany father and raised by English adoptive parents with ties to the circus industry. Like, yes? Uh, Casey identified with the many heritage, heritages she considered her own. She resided with Romanese in England for a time, worked as a circus horse master, and lived a bohemian life in Ireland with her Irish husband in the 1960s and 70s, during which time she wrote her masterpiece, Horse of Celine, in 1971. Like, literally, I didn't need to know anything about the book I just needed to read that paragraph to know that I wanted to buy this book. Like, I didn't, I don't even think I wrote, read that paragraph until after I purchased the book and I was just like, yeah, I know why I bought this book. But, <laughs> but the reason I bought this book was the style of her writing. I, I mean, like when I bought it, I loved this book. I, I read just like the first chapter and I just fell in love. As you can see, I've started reading it, but I haven't read very far. So it's still one that I'm working through. I'm reading like, I don't know, five books right now. So it's, it's slow going, but this was the paragraph, the last paragraph of the first chapter that sold me on this book. This is talking about the horses on an island in Ireland. The worst thing was the harm they did in the graveyard, to which they were irresistibly drawn by its lush grass 
and if not seen in time and driven out, they would doze propped against the headstones or lie on a newly dug mound and roll in its flowers. And the great rubbery farts they let out were enough to wake the poor defiled dead themselves. <laughs> yes, yes, just, so obvious, yes. Oh, and another thing. Okay, so I've shared, I mean, a couple of these books, they're like, their covers are okay, but like these two, I love them. I had such a hard time not purchasing books simply because I liked the cover art. I love the cover art. Um, I, I really enjoyed seeing the European cover art which is a lot different from the stuff that we see here in the United States. I really, really appreciate their design sense. And I loved seeing all the European copies of books. If I had unlimited funds and unlimited ability to pack and carry books and bring them home, I probably would have bought at least twice as many books while I was there. It was really, really hard to uh, narrow it down. But um, yeah, these are all so beautiful. The next book, look at this, it's wrapped. Um, I mean, it's a paper bag, it's not that fancy. But while we were in Dingle, I'm gonna unwrap this while I talk. While we were in Dingle, we were walking around on some of the side streets that were less obvious. And it really just felt like there was nothing on those streets, but we may as well just walk down them just because we hadn't yet. And while we were doing that, we found this old man's bookshop. Unfortunately, I can't remember the name of it. I'm gonna list all the bookstores that I visited in the information down below. His bookshop was organized, but in this very chaotic way. Oh, my cat. She's not supposed to be up there. It was kind of perfect and he was just there and he didn't even say hi to us when we walked in. We were just browsing and eventually I went up to him and I was like, I'm sorry. I, Poppy, Poppy. So eventually I walked up to him and I was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't know if you're actually open. The door was open. And so we, he was like, well, do you have money? If you have money, I'm hoping. And I was like, oh yes, yes, I will buy a book from you. I try to buy a book from every independent bookstore I, I go to because I read this statistic a while back that said something like only 20% of uh, customers that walk inside a bookstore buy a book or anything at all. And I was like, that sucks. Uh, first of all, books, I've been wanting to open my own bookstore for a long time now. I've been obsessing over it. And there's not much profit margin. It's like three to 4% profit margin on books, which is really small. <laughs> and I just, I don't, I don't see how people do it. I don't see how people make a living uh, with a bookstore. If you have a bookstore and that's how you make your living, please do reach out in the comments. I really, really want my own bookstore. I have a niche, I have a brand, I have all of it, I have the name, I have it all figured out in my head and I just, everybody keeps telling me, don't open a bookstore, you're not gonna make any money. And I'm like, well, I'm not doing it to make like millions, but you know, I wanna be able to support myself. Anywho, I bought a book from him. And after I bought my book from him, he disappeared with my book. He just, he just, just flitted away. And I was like, huh, where'd he go with my book? <laughs> he already had my money. He just, he just disappeared. And he had been hunting in his giant storeroom. He had been hunting down a little bag to put my book in and he like packaged it in here and he taped it up and he handed it to me and it was just, adorable because I really didn't need a bag, but it was adorable. So all of that said, I can't remember what book is in here. The book is called A Ghost in the Throat. This is a nonfiction book. Let me tell you what it says on the back because I need the refresher also. In 1773 Cork, a man is ambushed and shot dead. 
On discovering her husband's murder, an Irish noblewoman drinks handfuls of his blood and composes an extraordinary poem. Her name, I cannot pronounce it. The poem, I cannot pronounce that either. But that poem would later be described as the greatest poem written in the islands in the whole of the 18th century. She wrote this really incredible poem after having like an insanity moment, it seems. The poem echoes across time to find a woman in modern Ireland who reads it aloud and feels the author's voice coming to life. These echoes grow louder, inspiring a quest to discover the truth of the poet's story. I open this book and the woman who wrote this book is also a poet and it is written so beautifully. I really love very descriptive, illustrative, poetic prose. This, this is a female text. That got me right, sorry, excuse me, hiccups. That got me right away. I'm a feminist love female texts. I love books written by women. I primarily read books written by women. This is a female text composed while folding someone else's clothes. My mind holds it close and it grows, tender and slow, while my hands perform innumerable chores. This is a female text born of guilt and desire, stitched to a soundtrack of cartoon nursery rhymes. This is a female text and it is a tiny miracle that it even exists as it does in this moment, lifted to another consciousness by the ordinary wonder of type. Ordinary too, the ricochet of thought that swoops now from my body to yours. This is a female text written in the 21st century. How late it is, how much has changed, how little. This is a female text which is also a I can't pronounce that word. A dirge and a dr drudge song, an anthem of praise, a chant and a keen, a lament and an echo, a chorus and a hymn. Join in. That's the author's intro to her book. God, I wish I could pronounce Irish words. <laughs> um, but I'm very excited to read this one. On our way out of Dingle, Ireland, we stopped in another little town, Ennis, which was cute, but a little corporate feeling, but cute. And of course, as soon as we parked, we were trying to find some lunch. That's all we were doing there is trying to find some lunch. And as soon as we parked and started walking, I spotted a bookstore. So of course I went in the bookstore and sadly that one I didn't purchase anything in, but it was the bookstore owned by this author's parents. So in a way I supported them already, uh, but it was just happenstance and I thought that that was really cool because this was the book I bought um, at the bookstore, bookstore previous to that one. So fun little aside. If you're in Ireland, Ennis is like, it's maybe a nice place to go for a lunch break, a couple hours maybe, but yeah, it was not my favorite. Though they did have a really cool wandering, filled to the brim antique shop. And I was on this mission to find an antique clotter ring, which they did not have, but oh my Lord, they had so many beautiful, so many very expensive things but just kind of thrown together like a junk shop. Like it was packed to the brim. I'm surprised I didn't knock anything over. So if you're in Ennis, look up antique stores and go to them. And uh, of course, go to all the independent bookstores you can find. All right, you guys, I had to move the camera because Ash decided to beat up his sister in the corner and took a chunk of fur off of her. Poor Poppy. He had fur in his mouth. He can be a real jerk sometimes. So I only have two books left. We're almost there. Thanks for hanging in there on this one, you guys. Um, in my continued hunt for Irish legends, especially long form legends, I ended up getting another uh, short form book, which is fine. I'm very excited to read this one as well. And I purchased this book at 
a cute little store in Dingle. Uh, they were only open from like 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. the whole time we were there, which was pre-season. We decided to stop in on our very last day um, on our way out to the Burren. The Burren is this mystical limestone, barren, but not at all barren landscape in Ireland. And we had very little time there and we ended up seeing it on a snow day. I will be sharing about it in my vlog. Um, but <laughs> one of the things that we saw when we went out to the Burren was this, which is a portal stone. It is Ireland's most famous portal stone. And this is called Legendary Ireland by Ethne Macy. I'm probably pronouncing that incorrectly as well. Um, it is one of the few Irish legend books that I could find written by a woman. I prefer books written by women. I like their perspective and I like supporting other women. The really cool thing I thought about this book, this legend book specifically, is she goes around Ireland to famous heritage sites. These heritage sites are ancient, like pre-ancient Egypt, ancient. And she's writing the myths and legends that took place or were inspired by those heritage sites. So I thought that was really special. We at least were able to visit one heritage site while we were in Ireland and I, uh, I'm very excited to read all of these stories. I have long been obsessed with Ireland. I, as a young girl in high school actually, and a little bit in middle school, when the internet was like first becoming a thing, it was like dial up internet, I would spend hours just researching fairies and Celtic legends and mythology. My girlfriends and I would dream about living in a castle in Ireland with our Irish husbands and we'd all live together um, by the sea in this big beautiful castle and it was just this obsession and fantasy of ours. Reading these actual myths and legends from Ireland written by from a female perspective um, about these really magical heritage sites is just, I'm excited. It's, it's the nerd in me. It's like the high school nerd in me. <laughs> I don't know that this last book was written or compiled by an Irish author, but I picked it up in a bookstore in Dublin near the Temple Bar. This bookstore was all art books and mags or zines. And um, they had a section in the back where they had framed photographs that were all very beautiful. And I just felt really inspired being in a space like that as an artist. The only other bookstore that I've been in that was at all similar was the photography bookstore in, um, in San Diego at the big popular museum place in San Diego. I've been feeling, and this is a little secret, a little uninspired by my work, specifically my wedding work. That isn't to say I don't enjoy my work. I typically arrive at a wedding and I love what I do. I love creating imagery. I especially love elopements and intimate weddings, micro weddings. For those of you that don't know, I've been a wedding photographer for something like, I don't know, 14 or 15 years now. It's been a long time. And I got burnt out in 2019. I went really hard. I made my business very successful and I got really burnt out. When I was in this bookstore in Dublin, this bookstore full of art, I found this book called Love Story. And this is it. And it's a cute little book. I really love this image of this old couple in yellow uh, with a woman's hand grabbing her partner's jacket near his bum. I think it's adorable. These are tiny photo essays 
about love. And I was flipping through this book and it was just such a breath of fresh air. It re-inspired me uh, to do the work that I do. And I actually, I found this book on our first day in Dublin, but I didn't buy it. We actually got kicked out of the store. They, they were closing and they were like, hey, you need to leave. And I was like, okay, fine. So we left and I didn't buy the book. And I thought about this book the entire rest of the time that we were in Ireland. And on our very last day in Ireland, we dropped off our rental car and found some food and we're wandering around, um, still trying to find that clotter ring I mentioned earlier. And uh, we went back to this bookstore so I could pick this book up. This. This. It all really inspired me. This was the last book I purchased. And uh, yeah, that's, that's it. That's my journey of books that I purchased in Ireland. And since I haven't read any of these books yet, I definitely will be revisiting them as I go through them to tell you what I think or thought. I uh, am excited to, to get through these and, and share my thoughts with you. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you love this, my dog's about to bark, I just, I see it. Um, if you loved this uh, vlog or video and wanna see more of my vlogs and more of my Ireland content, please give, give this video a like and subscribe to my account. It's free, it helps a whole ton, and you'll get notified whenever I post, um, which is on Sundays. So I hope to see you around. Thanks for watching. She didn't bark. I'm so proud of her.